What's up you guys? I'm using Sculpty 3 translucent clay to sculpt these amulets. I knead the clay until it's soft enough to work with. Taking a walnut sized ball, I squish it out with my thumbs into a kind of oval shape. With two dowel rods as support, I use a clay roller to smush it down even further. This will make it flat and smooth all the way across. You can further refine the shape with your fingers. I twisted some jewelry wire into a looped fastener. The little looped arms act as an armature and makes me feel like it's less likely to break or pull free from the amulet. I plan on adding a jump ring to it later so I can string it on a necklace. But for now, I just squish it inside and cover it up with a little bit of clay. Next is adding the glass cabochons with the iris painted on them. Because these have to go in the oven, you can't use something that's plastic. It has to be glass. Just press it down gently so that it sticks. Next are the eyelids. I roll out a little snake of clay that's tapered down to a point on each end and just kind of squish it flat. The eyelids give the most expression to your piece, so take your time and adjust the eyelids as needed to get the expression you want. When satisfied, press it down gently and then add the other lid. Using a silicone sculpting tool, we're going to start refining the shape. Gently press and twist the tool to move the clay around and smooth it out. The gentle pressure makes the clay stick to itself better and also smooths out any fingerprints that you might have left. Once satisfied with the shape, I use the tool to start adding lines and creases and making the clay look more skin-like. I also blend the seam lines into the base of the clay. Any overhanging or extra clay can be easily cut away and smoothed out in the same method. Next is just decorating to your heart's desire. I add a small ball of clay and use the silicone tool to blend it into the rest. My goal is trying to make it look like a horn, but I'm also trying to give a strong base to what I'm going to do next, which is insert a gemstone. I make a small hole so I don't displace the clay too much, and just gently press the gem into the hole. Adjust the angle as needed and use the silicone tool to kind of squish the clay up and hold it tight. Anything you add for decoration needs to be either glass or stone or metal because you do have to put this in the oven to cure the clay. Be sure all of your decorations are oven safe. To further texture the clay, I use a small glass seed bead on the end of a toothpick. This will add irregular dents and dimples to the smooth surface so that it looks kind of like scales. Once 
Once you're happy with your designs, add it to a cookie sheet so that you can bake it. Just follow the curing directions on your clay packaging. Once cured and cooled down, you can paint it. I unfortunately lost all the clips of me painting. I use basic acrylic craft paint. I use a darker color for the base so that it could soak into all the nooks and crannies. I use black around the eye itself, painted over it with a more bold color, and dry brushed with an iridescent paint to highlight. Using painter's tape, I masked off the iris itself and used a satin acrylic spray paint to top coat it. If any paint got on the glass cabochon, you can use a toothpick to scratch it off gently. Use a Q-tip with isopropyl alcohol to give it a nice shine. The only thing left to do is add a jump ring to the loop and string it onto a necklace.